To many people out there, this little dongle-like device will look like either a USB flash drive or a Chromecast. However, as I'm sure some of you know, this is not either of the two. It's actually one of a few computers that's built into a tiny form factor. Hold on. This thing? Yeah, that is usually the reaction I get when my friends find out that this tiny device is actually a full-fledged computer. So to the uninitiated, this is the ASUS Chromebit. So like the name suggests, the Chromebit runs Chrome OS, which is commonly found on Chromebooks. There are other products like this out there, such as the Intel Compute Stick, which can run a full desktop version of Windows. Now these little things aren't actually anything new. In fact, the one I have here was actually introduced in March 2015. But these devices aren't for everyone. That's probably why a lot of people haven't heard about them. So, who could actually make use of such a small machine? I mean, the specs aren't that impressive. Well, the Chromebit is actually aimed towards enterprise users. The idea is, you would use a bunch of these small computers, which also happen to be pretty cheap, to power kiosks in shopping malls. That's just one of many applications that one of these things can be used for on an enterprise level. Still, a small number of consumers may find such a device useful, like myself. Currently, I'm using my Chromebit to complement my home theater setup. So why don't I just use a Chromecast? Well, I have a Chromecast, and I use it more frequently than I use my Chromebit. It's an older generation, but it's a lot more convenient. For the average person who wants to watch videos or movies on their TV, I would just recommend a Chromecast. However, as convenient as a Chromecast is, there are many things that it cannot do, or not do well. One of them is playing videos on unsupported websites. Sure, you can mirror your screen from a computer, but oftentimes the resolution will be lower and you'll lose out on frame rate. The audio can glitch out sometimes and you may even run into lag. Now for the most part, the popular websites that most people go to are well supported on the Chromecast. However, there are still exceptions. But if you have a Chromebit, you have the functionality of a full desktop browser. The main reason why I sometimes choose the Chromebit over the Chromecast is because you can't translate subtitles on the Chromecast. Not for now anyway. And I'm not the only one having this issue. We're just past the new year and a lot of people had family members over. And they may only know how to speak foreign languages, but movies here run in English. I tried running my movie on my computer, translating the titles there and then mirroring it over to the TV. But I quickly realized that the video was running at a much lower frame rate and it just appeared jittery. Which is never really a good way to watch any movie, in fact, some people may even find it outright frustrating. I know I'm just nitpicking, and the newer Chromecast models may perform better, but it's still something to consider, especially if your Wi-Fi connection isn't very strong. Well, if you have a Chrome bit, you can just auto-translate the subtitles of those movies if you bought it on YouTube or Google Play, or run a Google Chrome extension to insert custom subtitles to Netflix movies or other HTML5 media. Also, if you have local content, they will usually play a lot better on the Chrome bit than the Chromecast. Now the downside with the Chrome bit is that you can't interface with it from your phone. You also can't remote into it due to Google's restrictions, you will need to pay for that service. Also, the Chrome bit requires a little more power than a Chromecast would, so you would have to plug it into a wall instead of plugging it into a USB port, which may be a deal breaker for some people. But it wasn't for me because I have a lot of outlets to spare. So for a while, my solution was to use this tiny Bluetooth keyboard that also had a trackpad on it. They're pretty cheap on Amazon, but be careful which one you buy. The one I have here disconnected very frequently, which made it very painful to use. So eventually, I switched over to the Logitech K400 Plus keyboard. It didn't cost much more than the other keyboard, but it came from a brand that's known to be reliable. This keyboard connects to a dongle, which I just plugged into the Chrome bit via the USB port on the top. And it works like a dream. So should you get the ASUS Chrome bit? Well, if you have any issues related to the ones that I listed, then you should take a serious look into this product. Having a computer connected to the TV has solved many issues for me. And it isn't that expensive for a full-fledged computer. So if you're thinking of getting one, feel free to comment below. Also, if you already have one, let us know how you're using it. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time. I just want
want to say thank you for watching my new video. Um, it's 2017 and I'm hoping to upload a lot more regularly than I did last year because, well, I mean, it's not hard to beat last year. I want to give a shout out to John McGann. Uh, his YouTube channel is youtube.com slash McGann. He promised to make an upload if I uploaded, so here it is. Looking forward to seeing your upload, John. No pressure. While I'm at that, I might as well shout out uh, Ernest Kwame Adu. His YouTube channel can also be found in the description. He makes videos regularly. They're a lot of fun to watch. Um, and he's a friend of mine. Also, while you're at that, I heard Brian's gonna be making an upload this month, so I would keep an eye out for that as well. Okay, see you in the next video.